Welcome to Chuck Builds. Today we are going to be installing a custom firmware onto a Wise Cam to get it inside of Frigate, which is what's currently being screen recorded. Um, the Wise Cam is a pretty cheap, nice drop IP cam. Price changes. I got this on Prime Day for like 10 bucks, I think. And I don't really recommend Wise often. They're, they've had some security issues lately, and I think there's better options, but for the price, if you have the proper network segmentation, such as a VLAN, or you block it from accessing the internet, it's not bad. And I wanted to specifically do it, in this case, to upgrade ButterBot here um, from an old V1 Wise Cam that I can't get into Frigate because it doesn't give steady frame rate. So I've got the V3 Cam from Prime Day for 10 bucks, and we're gonna go through updating the firmware to a custom firmware to enable GoToRTC and then getting that into Frigate. Follow along. Obviously, you're gonna need a Wise Cam, and then you'll also need an SD card, which is currently connected to my computer. First thing we're gonna to need to do is download the Wise Mini Hacks from GitHub, and I'll have a link to this in the description. So we'll come up here to where it says code and click download zip. I'm just gonna put this on my desktop, and then I'll extract it from the zip so that we can use the folder on the desktop. All the instructions are on the GitHub page and I'll have that linked in the description. First thing we need to do is download the zip file and then we need to prepare our SD card. So on my computer, I have an SD card in here and I'm gonna to come to format and we wanna make sure it's FAT32 and it doesn't matter about the rest. So now that we have that, the next step is to transfer all the files from SD root to the micro SD card. So we'll open this up and then just drag it over to the micro SD card. Now, before you actually load this onto the Wise camera, I recommend that you set it up and get it on your account and get access to it because there's a few settings we're gonna wanna change first. So before I continue with this process and putting the SD card in the camera, let's get it set up. But we're gonna go to the Wise app, make sure you have an account already, I skipped that, and then we'll go to this plus button and then device cameras, and then V3. And it is currently flashing red. It's on a pretty short plug for power, unfortunately. So I'll hit next, and then I'll hit the setup button. Ready to I heard ready to connect. I'll choose my Wi-Fi. It's gonna give me a QR code. It said QR code scanned, and now we're waiting on it. So I actually got an error saying connection timed out, and I think I know what it is, so I'm gonna share it with you while we're here. If we come back over to the screen capture, I went to my AdGuard home instance. I'm gonna disable protection for 10 minutes, and I'm pretty sure that is what was messing it up. So what I'll do now is cancel the setup, go back and hit the setup button on the cam, Ready to connect, IOT. Code scan. Please wait. Scanned. And it went through that time. So it was the AdGuard home. So we're gonna come through and I'll call this office cam, uh, basic, no dollars, skip, finish. Don't really care about all that. What we do care about is coming into your device settings. We don't wanna upgrade the firmware but I wanna come through and turn off those little boxes. So you know what I'm talking about, uh, the motion boxes. This green box is what I wanna cover up. And then I wanna get rid of the timestamp as well and the WISE logo. Show WISE logo, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm actually gonna keep the timestamp. I'm gonna get rid of the status light. I was looking in the settings. You wanna come out to you, when you see the camera, we'll hit more and then we'll turn off motion tagging. There. We got rid of the WISE logo, we got rid of the motion tagging, logo, and I'm planning on keeping the timestamp on second thought. Um, so the rest of these settings don't matter too much. We just can't get back into it once we flash the firmware. It'll no longer be available 
in our app here. Don't mind so many of these, a lot of them are duplicates. I don't have that many of them. So the next step is gonna be editing the configuration file, which is found on our micro SD card in the WISE mini folder. And it's called wzmini.conf for .config. The reason it's that file type is so that the system can read it. You need to make sure that when you save this, that you are saving it as a .conf and not as a .txt. Um, and then you're editing it with the correct editor, such as not using Microsoft Word. I'll be using uh, Visual Studio Code just because I think it looks nice. And there's a lot of options in here. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. So we're going to reference the wiki on the project page on GitHub. And there's a whole section on the configuration file. Now, there's only a few things that I'm really planning on setting up. And the first is going to be the go to RTC server, which is right here. And so I will set all of this section to true. And then we're going to come down and I'm going to disable firmware upgrades. This is because I have this camera on a VLAN without internet access. That camera is going to not receive any more security updates after running this firmware. Um, you could upgrade it at a later date. I don't exactly know how that's going to work with the firmware. I just turn it off, but please be warned, you will not be getting security updates if you do that. I'm also going to come through and enable the web server. And I'm going to set the password to Chuck Builds. And there's a section over here on the config for the web server. We want this web server options so that we can change settings inside of the web server when we access it in a browser. And so I'll paste that there as well. So I'm going to now go to file, save as, and I'm just going to save it as itself. But notice that it's a properties file type in a .conf file. Click save and replace. And we should be good to go ahead and eject that micro SD card and stick it in our camera. Got my SD card and I'm going to put it inside of the camera now. And we're now going to apply power. So a robotic voice just said uh, WZ initializing first boot. So the firmware has taken, which is great. So we'll give it a moment to get onto the Wi-Fi. Once you go to the web address or the IP address of the camera, we got some options. The core config, there's nothing we can change there, so we'll skip that. We'll come down to the Wise Mini configuration, and this is a lot of the options that we just saw in that configuration file. So you can come through and update those things here if you need to at a later date. If we go back, we'll go to the go to RTC server. And so in the go to RTC settings, this is really why we did all this firmware to begin with is to get this um, software running on here. And we have some different streams and we can check real quick that it works just by clicking the stream button and it's gonna come up, slight delay, not bad. Um, and we'll go back and we can come and click this links button in between. And it kind of explains how all these links will work um, to get these streams. And then we'll open up Frigate. We're gonna to go to our configuration editor inside of Frigate. So inside of the go to RTC links section for this camera, we have all of these different links available to us. And we want this RTSP that specifically mentions Frigate or Home Assistant. And that's because it has the correct uh, bitrate and settings and all of that. So I'm gonna just come and click copy link address, come back to our config editor, and I've created an office cam and an office cam sub. And so I'll come paste this RTSP and make sure I get my spacing right. So that's the 1080p one. For the sub, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at my other camera. For the sub, we're gonna do the same thing. And then for the sub, we're gonna grab the whole URL, paste it, and then we're gonna change this 1080 to 360. For some reason, I have a FFmpeg transcode on here to change the audio type to Opus. I don't think that's needed. I can't remember why I did that. And we had placed our uh, Wisecam here underneath the streams, but we never actually referenced that stream later as a camera. So I've got mine sorted by brand and I'm going to come down and I'm just going to copy this kitchen cam.
and paste it again. Now it changes to office, office cam. So what this does different is this now references those two streams that we set above and brings in the substream and the mainstream. So it's one camera, two video streams, one is just checking for motion and then one's actually recording. Um, and we also have zones that I don't wanna import and I'll keep the rest of the settings there. Um, in general for Frigate, I wanna do a, a video. <laughs> Every time I get around to making a video, they release a new version. So I'm kind of waiting for version 14 to be done. What you really need to know is the input for the office cam is going to be RTSP with the input args as the preset RTSP restream because we're coming from go to RTC. Um, I'll have all this in the description for you to reference as well. So I click save and restart. All right, and so the camera has shown up. It's here in the corner right where my head is um, in my frigate and showing correctly. It's got the right name, it's got the timestamp and it looks pretty good. So uh, the other wise cams I have are next to it, this one and this one. And all three have been pretty good, but only with this firmware. So that's the main reason I did the firmware is to get that steady, consistent uh, video feed without it just spewing errors all the time and crashing for because it ran out of memory trying to get the next frame. Uh, pretty straightforward. I hope to cover Frigate 14 soon. It's awesome, I highly recommend it, but it's very touchy on getting it set up. And it's gonna be different for everybody depending on your network and your cameras and your host. Um, so I'm a little hesitant to get into that. But if you have a wise cam, this is a great way to add some extra life to it. Um, I now get to remove Butterbot and upgrade him to a better camera. But if there's anything else that you need help with with this, leave a comment, let me know. 